Welcome to Microservices Lab. In this lecture, we will discuss about GraphQL. Let us begin with the official definition of GraphQL. GraphQL is a query language for APIs and a runtime for fulfilling those queries with your existing data. GraphQL provides a complete and understandable description of the data in your API, gives clients the power to ask for exactly what they need and nothing more. So there are a few important points that are mentioned in this definition and those are first graphql is a query language for apis not a tool or a framework for designing apis so graphql is all about querying an api not designing an api second a client gets exactly what it wants from an api nothing more than that so unlike rest where we get the full representation of a resource in graphql we get exactly what we want. GraphQL actually is a collection of three things. Schema definition language or SDL, runtime environment and query language. Let us start with the schema definition language or SDL. Schema definition language is used to define a GraphQL schema. A GraphQL schema is used to expose the functionalities that are available in an application to its users. Let us understand this with the help of an example. Suppose we have an application called virtual library which mimics the behavior of a real library. So what could be the possible functionalities or operations for this application? One could be adding a new book to the library and other could be getting a list of all books that are available in the library. So these are the operations or functionalities that are going to be exposed to the users. And in order to expose these functionalities to the users, we have to use GraphQL schema. A GraphQL schema typically contains types which are similar to classes in Java. These types can have fields which are equivalent to instance variables in a Java class operations which can be performed on these types. These are similar to methods in Java. Let us take an example of a schema file that is returning SDL. So there are three types in this file, the query type, the mutation type and the object type. Object type is used to create a user defined type. So book is a user defined type which has three fields, id of type int, name of type string and pages of type end. So it is equivalent to a Java class. So now when we have a type in place, let us define a few operations that we can perform on this type. In order to define an operation in schema definition language, we can either use query type or mutation type. On one hand, query type is used to create a read only operation which will read data from server. On other hand, the mutation type is used to create a write operation which will manipulate data at server. The operations defined inside the query type are called queries and the operation defined inside the mutation type are called mutations. So we have two queries here. One is the getBook that takes an argument id of type int and returns a book. Second is the get books, which takes nothing but returns a list of books. Similarly, we have a mutation here called create book that takes two argument, name of type string and pages of type int and it returns an integer. So these operations are exposed to the users with the help of the GraphQL schema. So these operations get book, get books and create book all are available to the users with the help of this schema. So the schema contains types and operations. The runtime environment. Runtime environment performs two major operations. First, parsing this GraphQL schema file and creating an in-memory schema from it. And executing the operation specified in the client's request. First, 
reading information from the schema file again and again will be inefficient. So the runtime environment creates an in-memory representation of the schema file that contains all the information defined in that schema file. So the first duty of the runtime environment is to create an in-memory schema from the GraphQL schema file that will contain all the necessary information like types and operations that were there in the schema file. The second thing the runtime environment does is executing the operation. A user can use any of the operations that were defined in the schema file. Runtime environment is responsible for handling the user's request. It looks for the operation specified in the request. Then it uses the in-memory schema to check if that operation exists in the schema or not. If it exists, then runtime will execute it and will perform the specified action like reading or manipulating the data at server. So, as a client, if I want to use an operation defined in the schema file, I have to make a query and pass that query to the runtime environment. The runtime environment will inspect that request in order to fetch the operation and then it will validate that operation in order to see if that operation exists in the schema file or not. It will use the in-memory representation of the schema to validate the operation. And if that operation exists in the schema, then it will execute it and will perform the specified action. So these are the responsibilities of the runtime environment. Next, query language or QL. Query language is used by clients to use operations that are defined in the GraphQL schema. Query language enables a client to select only the required fields from a set of fields. So as a client or a user, if I want to execute an, any of the operations specified in the schema file, I have to use the query language offered by the GraphQL in order to specify that operation. So here I am using the query language to specify the getbooks operation. After specifying this, I will send this request to the runtime environment. Runtime environment will inspect this request and will fetch the operation from it. Then it will validate th this operation. It will check if this operation exists in the schema file or not. And if it exists, then it will execute it and will perform the required actions. Here the result is returned from the runtime environment. Here I'm getting the name of the books that were available in the database. As you can see, I'm only getting the names, not the IDs and pages. This is because I have only asked for the name. If I have, if I ask the ID and the pages as well, then I will be getting those fields as well in the result. In order to proceed further, we should know about data fetchers. A data fetcher is a callback function. It is linked to every query, mutation, and field. When a client uses an operation defined in the schema file, the runtime environment invokes the data fetcher linked to that operation in order to perform the specified action. So every query and mutation is linked to a data fetcher, which is basically a callback function. This callback function will be invoked by the runtime environment in order to perform the required action. So our getbook operation or query is associated with this data fetcher. This data fetcher will get the ID argument from the request and will find the book as per the ID and it will return the book. Second query was the get books. So get books takes nothing but returns a list of books. List returns a list of books. So here this data fetcher is associated with this query and it will return the list of all books. Last, the create book mutation or operation is associated with this data fetcher. This data fetcher will get the name and the pages arguments from the request, will create a new instance of the book 
and we'll save it and then return the id for this book for this newly created book so this is how the data fetchers are associated with the operations let us see how the in memory schema is prepared so first we create a schema file using the schema definition language and then we create the required data fetchers for the operations defined in the schema file then we feed the schema file and the data fetchers to the runtime environment and then it prepares an in memory schema from it this is a high level overview of the process now let us see how the execution takes place so when a client asks for an operation asks to execute a operation just like the get books which returns a list of book, books so basically the server will get this request first and it will forward the request body to the graphql runtime environment graphql runtime environment will inspect the request to fetch the supplied operation in the request so after getting the operation the graphql runtime environment will validate it to see if this operation exists in the in memory schema or not and if this exists in the schema the schema will return the associated data fetcher which is linked with that operation and will give this the data fetcher and will give this data fetcher to the graphql runtime environment graphql runtime environment will execute this data fetcher and will perform the required action so this is how the whole flow looks like from the client side to the graphql runtime now let us see the graphql in action here is my schema.graphql file or graphql schema file it contains a query get book which takes an argument id of type end and returns me a book and a mutation called create book that takes an argument book of type book input and returns me a book so let us create a request and send it to the server i will be using the get book operation here so i will specify it using the graphql query language so the so the code I'm writing now is actually the GraphQL's query language. I will be fetching the book for ID 1. And this book has several fields like the ID, name, pages and author. So first I will be fetching only the name. Let us send the request and see what we get. As you can see, in the response we get the name of the book only now what if i add the pages and the id fields as well see i am getting those fields now so this is how actually graphql works the things i have specified here are coming in the response so a client gets exactly what it wants nothing more than that so I am getting only those fields which I am asking for. So this is how GraphQL work. So I hope you get something from this lecture. Please share and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.